So you probably noticed in most of my videos, I explain how to control a ton of digital outputs using just a few pins off your microcontroller. Well, in this video, I'm gonna explain how to use those same techniques to control digital inputs to the microcontroller, okay? So before I go any further though, I just wanna explain something because I bet some of you are already thinking, I already know how to control a bunch of digital inputs to the microcontroller using just one pin, an analog input pin. And this is a pretty good technique and I just wanna talk about it real quick here. So this is the technique where you tie a bunch of push buttons all together on one side and then to ground th through some resistor value. And then on the other side of that push button, you pull it up with a different value resistor so that when you push it in, you create a voltage divider at this point and then simply do an analog read of that. And since it's they're all different resistor values, there'll be a different value voltage there. So you can, dis you can determine then which push button was pushed. But you know, this is good for maybe three or four push buttons, maybe five, I don't know. But what about, I don't know, 50 or 100? Or what about 1,000 push buttons? Uh, that's where this technique comes in. So let me explain what we have over here. So there's nothing really too special or fancy going on with this circuit. It's simply two shift registers wired in series and one shift register controls eight LED outputs and then the other controls the eight push button inputs, okay? And they're really responsive. So they're not wired directly to the LEDs. They're actually read in by the microcontroller and then it decides whether or not to turn the LED on or off, okay? You can do anything you want with the push button what value once you get it into the microcontroller. So I'm actually mixing inputs and outputs together in this circuit using still only four pins off the microcontroller. So, and it's really responsive. In fact, you can push two at the same time or maybe four at the same time. So you can do a lot of cool stuff, which is another problem with the analog type circuit. You know, if you think about it, what if you do push more than one at the same time? You gotta consider all those combinations read right in here. So. There's some flaws in that circuit. There's even some flaws here, and we'll talk about that more in a second. But let's drag out the whiteboard and really take a closer look at what we got going on here. All right, just before we get started, I want to quickly mention that I will not be getting into the nitty gritty details about how shift registers work. Okay, so just in case you don't understand how shift registers work, check out the links in the description below before watching this video because I'm going to assume that you already know how shift registers work, what they do and how they're wired and all that good stuff. So check those out before watching this video. But anyway, what we have here are the eight push buttons I just demonstrated for you in the circuit. But what we do is we connect all of them together on one side, okay? So right now I'm showing you eight push buttons, but this could be a hundred, this could be a thousand, you know, it could be as many as you want. But you wire one side of them all together, okay? And then that will come down to the microcontroller where you pull it down with a resistor to ground, okay? And I'm using a 10K ohm resistor for this. And this is a digital input on your microcontroller. And it should be an interrupt capable pin, meaning that as soon as this pin goes high, because we're gonna, we're gonna call the interrupt on a rising edge of this pin, as soon as it goes high, or when it gets five volts on it, it's going to call a, what they call an interrupt service routine, okay? It's a chunk of code that will be executed as soon as this goes high. So wherever you're at in your normal program, if this goes high, it's gonna yank you out and execute that code, okay? Kind of basic stuff. And once we look at the code, uh, that'll make more sense. But what we have here though, okay, one side all connected together. On the other side here, these go to the, shift register outputs, okay? So this is your QA or Q0 all the way through, okay? And they connect directly into these push buttons, okay? And on boot up, when we start our program, what we'll do is we'll make all of the outputs high. So we'll shift out a byte to this shift register with a value of 255. So all eight bits will be high, okay? And what happens then is, you know, we're going through our program, whatever. And as soon as one of these push buttons gets pressed, 
we'll get current flow through this and it'll pull this pin high okay and it'll call that it'll call that interrupt service routine that routine that executes code but see the problem with this though is that you don't know which push button was pushed so as soon as that code is called what we do then is instead of making them all high over there what we'll do is we'll make just one high zero 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 so we'll write that to the shift register almost immediately so that what we what we're trying to figure out now is which push button was actually pushed so if it was indeed this one and we write a one to it then and and this is still high that means current is still flowing there then that means that that push button was the one that was pressed okay and if it was not pushed or it doesn't matter if it if it detected if it was pushed or not pushed because it'll do this anyways it'll then simply shift that bit over and then write that to the shift register okay so it'll shift the only one pin that was on over one and then check this is this pin still high if it's not then that it was not that pin was not pushed okay and the reason I'm, I'm talking about shifting it all the way through before just giving up when it does find it is because if you push more than one push button so you know if I'm pushing this one and say this one then eventually it'll get down there and I mean this happens so fast so that if I did push both of these it would eventually also register that when it would know that you are you also pushed that push button okay so that's how it works I mean it's as simple as that there's really nothing more to it and I just wanted to talk about the technique here on how to do this okay so if you had say another shift register over here then you'd have to write in your code you know that you're gonna you're gonna shift the one all the way through the first shift register and then make that one chill out for another eight cycles while you make you shift the one through the next shift register hopefully that's making sense you know as always I don't ever really plan these videos out so I kinda just think about what I'm gonna say as I go so there is one problem with this circuit and some of you may have already noticed what the problem is if you do push two at the same time that could be really bad for your shift register think about it as you're shifting a one through this and I'm just gonna I don't even know why I just erase those but as you're shifting a one through these that this pin right here is five volts off the shift register this is zero volts so if I push these two at the same time that's a dead short into the shift register because right now when this is five volts this is sourcing current and when this is zero volts it's sinking current so that's a dead short to ground through there so you got to do something about it in fact if you did do that this guy over here would detect nothing it would stay at zero this would sink all that current so what you got to do and by the way these shift registers may be protected so you may not blow them up and they may have their own version of what I'm going to show you here so what you got to do on each each push button is either put a resistor on each one and these are basically just current limiting resistors so you can make them all like 1k 1k you don't want to make them too big because then when that goes high to 5 volts you're creating a voltage divider here with the one with the 10k down here so that's one way to do it and if I push both of these in I won't damage anything but I also would not register either of them as well okay because this is still zero so then I would actually get like 2.5 and then you also have to figure out what you got going on here with the, uh, the 10k over here so anyways that's one method but that's still not the best this is what I did I used diodes and I'll explain why here in a second I don't have to write all of these in but I use diodes because we don't really care about sinking current into the shift register so when we have 5 volts in 0 0 and we push two at the same time this 5 volts here will be or this I mean this diode here will be forward biased okay 5 volts on this side through 10k to ground right so this pin will go high it'll, it'll actually be somewhere around like 4.3 volts okay because there's a, a drop with the diode but 
this will not conduct because I'll have five volts here. So when I do push both at the same time, this diode here is reverse biased, so it will not conduct. And I don't know if you're if you guys are familiar with diodes or not, but they only conduct current in one direction when they are forward biased. So think of them as you know, they they need to be high on one side um, with respect to the other side in order to conduct. So if I have five volts on this side and a lower voltage on this side, it will conduct and I'll get my voltage across there. Okay? Hopefully that makes some sense. But what this allows you to do then is push two buttons at once. So if I sat here and held these two buttons together, right, I'll register this one first because it'll go 5 volts, 0, 0, 0, 0, you know, and then it'll shift the bit over, and then this one's now 5 volts, 0, and 0. So now that one can conduct at 5 volts, and these will not conduct those diodes. So I'm protecting the outputs of the shift register. And basically that is what I have right here. I doubt you can see on the camera all of the diodes that I have there. But that allows me to push two at the same time and register those. Okay? So, I mean, that's pretty much it. That's the technique. So now we can jump over into the code and uh, really sort of get a, a firmer grasp of what's happening here. All right, so here's the code. Um, nothing too special here, and as always, I kind of just wrote this in a very rough manner just to get it up and running and to debug the whole thing. But it does work, and it works pretty good, so it might work for you guys. But, you know, there's no comments or anything in here explaining what how anything works, so we'll have to go through it line by line here. And, of course, it will be available on my website, link in the description. So what we do first is uh, include the SPI library. And we'll talk about that here in a second. Uh, then we do some variables, jump into the void setup. And since we're using the SPI library, we have to use these dedicated pins for that. So we've got your data and your clock. You know, pin 13 is your MOSI pin, master out, slave in. Pin 11 is your S clock. Okay, and you have to use these for the SPI library. And uh, the reason we're using SPI, not just shift out, is because it is so fast. Okay, you can actually run this. And we'll, we'll talk about that in a second here. But then also we have uh, pin mode 4, and we'll set that as an output. So here's your three pins you need for the shift registers. Okay, data clock and latch. The latch pin could be any pin you want. Okay, so pin mode 2 is your input from the push button. So on the one side of all the push buttons, that feeds into this pin. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and set up the SPI library, most significant bit first, and the mode is zero and then the uh, speed is SPI clock divided by two so this thing's gonna run at 8 megahertz so that's ridiculously fast and that's why I use the SPI library for this and then we'll go ahead and kick it off SPI dot begin okay so what we'll do first now is shift some data out and we only have two shift registers so we only have to shift out two bytes at a time so what we'll do is sh send out a 255 Okay, so that's eight ones. Okay, eight bits all with a value of one. Okay, and the way we have these these shift registers wired up is the data pin is going to the LED output shift register first. So when we shift this in, it goes into the first shift register, but followed up, we send all zeros. We send eight zeros. So what that does is it shifts all these ones over to the second shift register, which is controlling the push buttons, and then it, and then we get all zeros for the outputs, the LED outputs. Okay, then we latch it, four high, four low, done. That's how easy it is to control shift registers. It's ridiculous. Okay, and yeah, I set up the serial uh, here just in case I needed it. I don't think I used it anywhere though. And then we'll attach the interrupt. So interrupt zero. Pin read is the function we'll call, and it's on the rising edge of that pin, okay? So digital pin 2 is interrupt 0. Here's the void loop. Nothing there, okay? Nothing occurs in the loop. This is all happening in the background. So as soon as that pin goes high, bam, calls this routine here. And it jumps in, and you'll notice a little bit of a, a kind of weird thing in here. So we, we do a for loop right away, 50 times of a thousand microseconds. So that'll give us 50 milliseconds. 
And the reason I didn't just go delay 50 is because the delay function doesn't work in here. Okay, that'll that's one of those gotchas. So you have to use the delay microseconds in here. I guess the delay function actually uses interrupt, so that's kind of why it doesn't really work in here. So anyways, the reason we have a delay though in here at all is in case you do push, it, it's also it's like a debouncing. So right when you push the button in, there might it might go fly up and down a little bit. So we want to make sure it's solid on before we actually check anything. Okay, so this is called, and it does it 50 milliseconds, but this also checks or allows, in case you push two buttons at the same time, it's kind of allows both of them to be pushed in. Because you know when you push two buttons in, it's not like you're pushing them in at the exact same time. So you're giving it 50 milliseconds for that to happen. This value check here is equal to one. We'll, we'll talk about that more in a second. And then we jump into this little loop here that happens eight times. And this is how we go through and check each of the push buttons. So remember, right before this, we have all ones on the push button. So we don't know which one it is. So now we're gonna find out which one it is, okay? So we'll do an SPI transfer of check, and then output. Okay, remember, this one, whenever we write to it first, this is actually going to the push buttons. And then it goes to the LED outputs. So we have a byte here called output, and this is to update the LEDs. This check here, it goes going to the push buttons, and we're only sending over a one first. So we sent over a one, and then we'll latch it, and then we're gonna hang out for 500 microseconds just to let make sure that the pins all go high, okay? And then we'll check it. If now the push button pin, digital pin read two, went high, and then we do a, if let's just say it did go high, if the bit read of output of J, so we're at zero now, is equal to one, then bit write J zero. So what we're doing here is just checking the pin. What was it last written to? Okay, because output is the, is the byte that we're gonna send to the LEDs. So we're just checking to see if it was already a one. If it was a one, make it a zero. And if it was not a one, make it a one. Okay, that's all this is doing. Okay, I know it's probably a stupid caveman way of doing it, but that's all it is. Okay, so we're just checking it, flipping the LED, all right, and then you're done. Then, okay, so what you'll do next is shift the, you'll shift the one that was here, because right now check is just a one, it's seven zeros with a one in it, so all seven zeros with a one, and then when we shift everything over to the left once, it'll shift this one that we had here over to the next spot over, okay? and then it'll continue this for loop. So now the one is in the second position over and it'll check it again. And that's how it works. It goes through it eight times, each bit in the byte until it's done. And then finally, once it's checked it and it's found which pin went high, it will then send out all to the push buttons, all ones. Okay, so it'll resume its last state. So now everybody's at one. So anybody could trigger this to, to the, the interrupt here. And then we'll we'll update the outputs with the actual output byte. Well, we are kind of doing that here as well. So we'll send over that byte, latch it in. And then what we do here, this is kind of interesting. So what we do here is we wait for you your finger to let go of the push button. So if you were if you pushed it, it'll go through all this, but my finger's still in the button. We don't want to jump out of this because the light the LED will just flicker. It'll keep calling this thing. So what we're doing here is just waiting for you to let go. So this is a while, infinite while loop while the uh, you're still reading that pin is high, okay? And it's just doing nothing in here. It's waiting for you to let go of the button. Okay, and then that's it. That's the whole thing. So I kind of rushed through this, but I, I hope that sort of under, it makes some sense. And, uh, you know, obviously this code is written horribly and you can improve upon it, but that's not... That's not what the point of this video is. I'm really trying to just drive home the technique in controlling a ton of inputs here. Okay, so that's the video. Thanks for watching.